Welcome to Tech Tuesdays and thank you for joining us. If this is the first video you're watching, please be sure to take a look either on our website or our YouTube account for more technology and internet based videos. Today I'd like to talk about Goodreads, which will be linked in the description at goodreads.com. You may have heard of Goodreads previously. It's a free platform for readers to discover new books and authors, as well as easily keep track of book series that you read. You can use Goodreads without creating an account. There are some advantages to creating an, a free account, um, but today I just want to go over how you can use Goodreads without creating an account, and next week we'll go over some of the ways you can use Goodreads with an account. Right now I'm just on the home page, and since we're at the beginning of the year, they're currently promoting the Goodreads Choice Awards for 2020. On Goodreads, the best of 2020 picks that they uh, choose are not actually chosen by Goodreads staff. They are chosen by the Goodreads users. At the end of each year, users are allowed to vote for the titles they've loved the most in a wide variety of categories. You can see a few of them here. There are a few rounds of voting until eventually a winner is declared for each category. The Goodreads Best of lists are a unique insight into what readers are loving and reading. As you can see, over 5 million votes were cast for 2020. So this is what that looks like. <clears throat> you can see here where the voting schedule is. So it starts at the end of October and then at the beginning of December is when they'll announce those winners. These are the different categories. So we've got our fiction, and then they break up different genres of fiction. We've got uh, nonfiction and poetry, memoir. Um, they highlight a debut novel. We've got young adult categories, middle grade, picture books. You just have to click on any category that you're interested in, and you'll be able to see all of the titles that made the final round and how many votes they got. Up at the top, you'll see how many votes each of those books got. If you're interested in any of the titles, you just have to hover over the book jacket and a window will pop up. If you'd like a little bit more information and get this full synopsis, just click on more. You'll get that full synopsis about what this book is, as well as how many people have rated the book and what that overall rating is out of five stars. And you can do this for any of the books that are in the list. If you're interested in going to any of the categories, they are on the left side over here. You can just click on that category and it'll take you to that list. You can see it's all laid out exactly the same. That's uh, one of the things that's really nice about Goodreads, a lot of their pages um, across genres will have the exact same layout um, and so it's a really nice for user navigation to um, never get too complicated and at the bottom as I've kept scrolling you'll see they have links to all of the past years of the Goodreads winners that they have done all the way back to 2011 so you can just click on any of those years and you'll be taken to that list and it again works the same way. You can choose any of the categories <clears throat> and you'll get that full list of books that came out that year. <clears throat> this is for books that came out in the year. Um, so they do have to be published for whatever year they're being nominated for. Okay, I'll go ahead and just click on one of the books so that we can see what the uh, book record looks like on the Goodreads page. As you can see here, we've got the book cover, the title, um, the author's name is clickable, which means uh, if we open this link up, I'll switch over it to real quick, we'll get some more information about the author, um, if they include any of their social media, what sort of genres they write in, if they have a website they've linked. Sometimes they'll have a picture uploaded. If they're themselves active on Goodreads, they might. You'll get a little bit of a synopsis about the author. And then, of course, you'll have all of the author's books. 
to um, if this is an author you like and you want to make sure you've read all of their books, you can go through and um, and see that uh, and see if you have read all of their books. Um, and you just have to click on the title and you'll be taken straight to that record. I'll close that one so we can go back to confess. Again, pressing on more will give me the full uh, synopsis. Since this was a winner, it will get this uh, banner right here, letting us know that it won. And on the right, we've got also readers also enjoyed. So if I'm scrolling through these book jackets and I recognize one of these book jackets as a book that I liked, uh, it's possible that I might like this book as well because other users on Goodreads have read both and liked both. <clears throat> I will mention right here, this is the library extension box. Um, we do have a video about installing library extension. Um, it works on Goodreads. So as you can see here, it's letting me know that on, uh, on our catalog's website for Bellwood Library, the book is available, there's copies, and I can go ahead and borrow it if I'd like from the library. <clears throat> We've also got genres that are being listed, and you'll see here that there's 2,515 users that have marked it as romance, um, 1,653 marked it as new adults. These are all different Goodreads users that have gone through and tagged books in, in the genres, and so whichever uh, gets the top votes for the genre becomes kind of what Goodreads decides is uh, the genres that it'll that it'll display. So it displays them from the most popular all the way down to the bottom. <clears throat> You'll see here as well there's an, a, uh, an option for a question and answer. If you have some uh, questions that you want to get answered before reading or after reading, while you're reading it, if you're confused about anything, you can go ahead and ask the community and they'll let you know. Um, someone will respond to you. You can see this one got 11 answers. This one has eight. There are 42 questions total. If you're interested in, in reading the questions, you can just open up that link. I'm just doing it um, here in a new window to make it easier to go back. But um, yeah, you can just go ahead and read those questions. There are also lists. Um, so these are different lists that users have put the book on. So we've got Most Anticipated Romances of 2015. Um, it was a book that was Can't Wait For for 2015. And then, of course, more lists with this book, which is something you could also open up as well. But now we're going to get into the community review section. And so this is where you can read the actual user reviews. Um, <clears throat> at the top up here, you have your options for sorting. Get rid of that. So if you'd like to filter, um, if you don't want to see any five-star reviews or you only want to see those, if you're only interested in text reviews, um, if you want to sort them newest or oldest, you can do that as well. Otherwise, they'll just display it um, in this order and you can go ahead and read um, people's reviews. Um, some people will be very lengthy in their reviews. Uh, there are people that kind of do this professionally, as it appears this person does with, with linking their social media at the bottom like that. So there are people, again, here's another one where someone's linking her video that she made about it. So there are people that um, sort of professionally review books um, that use Goodreads, where you can go and find um, the books that they've been reading. However, the vast majority of users on Goodreads are just readers like you or me. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and open up the list section uh, that I briefly mentioned with that last book, with it being on some anticipated uh, book lists for the 2015 year for when it was released. <clears throat> this is Listopia, as it says. And this is another thing that users can participate in. 
users are able to create their own lists and there are also um, other lists that get created as well. And so right now they're featuring a few different lists. Um, they're promoting a list from the end of last year that was promoting uh, books that were being published then. We've also got um, young adult and middle, middle grade books that had uh, main characters that were people of color that came out last year. Um, oh, this is a, um, the forthcoming books for 2020 by African Americans. Uh, this is actually a list that I use a lot for our book club. Um, our book club, Shades of Fiction, reads books that have been written by African Americans. And so I find this list very helpful for me when I am going through each year, um, finding the new books that are getting released. You can see they already have the 2021 um, list ready. <clears throat> so when I'm going through each year looking for new books that are coming out, um, written by African Americans, this is a really great uh, resource for me to go to um, because I, as you can see, I'll get a a long list of, of books that'll come out throughout the year uh, that I might be able to add as one of the books that we'll read and discuss. Real quick, I'll go back to Listopia just to take a look at some of the other um, lists. They also will show you lists that have recent activity. So you can see um, there's a list for the best Sarah Jessen novels. She's an author, so someone has created a list um, for her books. Uh, science fiction books featuring Pluto. <clears throat> and then on the side as well, they have different categories, genres that you can choose that you might be uh, looking for books for. So if you just choose any of those categories, it'll bring you back a list um, I chose middle grade, so I'm getting middle grade book lists. Um, I've got favorite books from my childhood, which based on the jackets, we've got some Narnia and Anne of Green Gables, Charlotte's Web. So these look like it's going to be a little bit of those kind of classic children's stories. <clears throat> then we've also got some debut books. So we've got 2012 debut authors, 2014. Um, Best intro to sci-fi for young readers. You can see there's a, a wide variety of um, books uh, or book lists, I should say, that they've got created um, that you can use if you're trying to find a new book for to read. Oh, the other thing I will mention is about a book book series. So when a book is a part of a series, underneath the title, there will be this light gray text. In this case, it says this is the Lunar Chronicles number two. So this means this is the second book in a series. And if I click on that, which is a link, I will get the full information about the series. I'll get a little bit of a synopsis about the series, as well as all of the books in the order that they are. If you do see book, um, like right here, it says 0.5 and then 1.5. These are typically um, novellas or short stories that have been released. Um, and the book one, book two, book three will be the, the full length standard book in the series. Um, all series are different, uh, and so it just depends some authors do release short little novellas and short stories in between their series. Regardless, um, now if I was interested in starting this series or if I had read a couple of the books and left off and didn't really know where I needed to go next, I could come here and look at this page and be able to see that Cinder's first and it goes to Scarlet Press and I could go through and figure out either which book I needed to read next or start with. And I could go um, through there. So this is another thing that uh, Goodreads has as a feature. They um, make it very easy to keep track of the series that we read. Uh, 
that is a little bit of an, intro in, an introduction into using Goodreads without an account. Uh, next week we'll take a little bit of a look at some of the things you can do with an account. Thanks for joining us.